soil fauna and their role. Uh, soil fauna help to change nutrient cycling by feeding on material, which increases their surface area, uh, translocating nitrogen and other nutrients from the soil to the substrate. Uh, they can disseminate microbes from their gut and their waste, or spore feeding, um, you know, walking through, stepping on a puffball, spreading spores, things like that. Um, and then organisms are very differentiated based on their size and location and time scale in which they appear and remain. So organisms differ based on their size. So I can think of even within worms, there's you know, really large earthworms or really small litter worms. Uh, spatial location, some are found in litter only, some A horizon only, others can go up and down and sort of mix the A and the O horizon um, range. So again, think of a, a small bug versus a shrew. Um, the ability to move uh, horizontally across the landscape as well. And then time scales. So uh, there's some historical fauna that interacted with the soil that may not be there anymore. Um, some only interact with the litters. Once the litter's gone, they're no longer there. And so when we think of that geologic time frame, uh, it becomes important to think about the soil fauna that was there as well. Some herbivores feed on roots of living plants. Uh, saprophytes, again, mostly feeding on dead plant matter or microbes, uh, carnivores feeding on other soil fauna, parasites, so many of them are nematodes, which is what this picture is of, and the relatively high degree of function and specialization. So a lot of these um, are very specialized in what they eat, um, maybe how they catch it, or the requirements or niche that they need to be there and to thrive. Um, flip side of that is their biodiversity is so wide and incredible um, that there is almost every, always something in every niche. So microfauna, these live in water films in the soil. Um, things like amoebas, nematodes, uh, can dwell in the soil only part of their life. Others spend their entire life in the soils. Again, just depends on their life cycle. Um, got some pictures here, an amoeba, a protozoan. And then uh, I believe the bottom is some columbola. Uh, mesofauna live in air-filled spaces, so these are a little bit larger. Think of soil mites or springtails larger nematodes, gnat larvae. Um, these are usually restricted to current pore space, so they can't really make their own burrows, but they can navigate through the burrows that others have made or that uh, form in between soil aggregates. So just a size chart of different um, micro and meso and macro flora and fauna. Macrofauna and their role in northern soils. Uh, the macrofauna historically only do a small component of decomposition, and it's really driven by bacteria and fungi. So this do a lot to the uh, temperature that we see through most of the year. In tropics and subtropics, though, the macrofauna play a much larger role, sort of active year-round, uh, regardless of soil temperature. The macrofauna include organisms larger than two millimeters, uh, thinking you know, moles, gophers, earthworms, millipedes. They feed on other soil fauna, microorganisms, and plant parts. And then early digestion of plants parts is easier for the macrofauna. And then from there, the micros can take over. And oftentimes, these are ecosystem engineers. So they're called that because they're sort of driving um, the ecosystem in any changes or um, other tiers depend on them. Earthworms in forest soils. So earthworms are very good at digesting leaf litter. Um, 
and they are exotic in our northern woods uh, due to the most recent glaciation in the Midwest. Um, they are still sort of progressing north. There's north woods in Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, the UP where earthworms aren't present and uh, you can actually almost see the range, the edge of their range, just due to the decrease in leaf litter that they are able to have a large effect in a short period of time. Um, so again, we think about our soil horizon from our other video, the nice, thick, uh, diverse O horizon, and we have different faunas in different locations, so maybe some fungal spores at the surface, uh, some larger beetles in sort of the OA horizon there, and then once we get down to our A horizon, we're seeing more fungi and bacteria. Uh, changes as a result of earthworm activity, so we go from a nice thick O horizon uh, down to an OI, and then all of the O horizon has been mixed with the A. And so uh, we see a thicker A horizon, but that results in a bigger loss of nitrogen, uh, destruction of aggregates, and loss of microbial associations. And so earthworms are having a fairly large impact on the forest floor and the forest soils, and that can alter uh, the plant species that can regenerate in those forests then. So again, we see a very uh, large decrease in mass in a short period of time at the beginning of the decomposition when earthworms are present. And this can result in the loss of habitat for things like salamanders, um, ground nesting birds, and certain tree seeds. So invasive animals have the ability to re-engineer or change a soil ecosystem. Um, we've been talking about earthworms and their ability to rapidly decompose litter. Uh, sequestering carbon from soil and removing carbon from the pool that's available to others and reduce the available niche for fungi and so the earthworms is just one example of an invasive that can alter a ecosystem based on changing the soil.